Hey guys, uh, head of BPC Asia Pacific. Uh, I'm very much delighted to see how we can uh, walk uh, in here. We have uh, one of our uh, customer here, which is Nets, as you all know, and, and with that comes along a uh, number of banks, I think 14 banks, uh, using Smart Vista as a uh, solution for card management as well as for driving ATMs and POS and switch for scheme cards and, uh, and, and payment tokens. So uh, let's move along. Uh, methods of payments, they have been changing since almost 6,000, uh, 4,000 years ago or 5,000, 7,000 years ago, if I get my maths right. Um, but as you can see, uh, we are now, uh, they say we are in a uh, cashless society. Cashless has been introduced to us almost over 50 years ago when American Express first issued the cards. Oh, but we are still using cash. So, however, and now uh, it is a disruption by this uh, messaging uh, company to get into the payments area as well and come up with wallets. Uh, I have similarly seen this in Indonesia with Gojek. Gojek has come up, which is basically doing all sorts of e-commerce uh, type of activities and then they come up with this wallet as well and in Singapore Grab Taxis in similar I mean it is a uh, Uber type uh, company where Grab Taxis is partnering with uh, DBS uh, I think it's DBS or UOB one of them uh, to come up with uh, um, many types of payments uh, digital payments capability so the idea is to basically to be frictionless payments using contactless uh, omnichannel experience uh, having the capability to have multiple channels to, uh, to accept uh, the payment tokens as well as customer self-service, agency banking. When I say agency banking, uh, let's talk about agent being used uh, for banking, uh, banking services. And of course, uh, identification via biometrics uh, using face and things like that. However, what's happening right now is that we do have fintech companies, as I said, they are the disruptors but whatever it is, they are coming with a lightning speed of implementation. They don't have to set up a whole lot of uh, or set up or be within this framework of regula regulatory requirements. Uh, whereas bank is seen as uh, much slower and uh, uh, in terms of speed of implementing uh, new ideas. While there is a whole lot of people within the banks who come up with new ideas, it's an implementation part which gets into the way. Uh, but whereas, whereas FinTech, uh, they do have an implementation issues, but they work in a different uh, uh, model. Uh, they actually are product developers. Uh, they start developing product, and that could be uh, most likely like an MVP, which is minimal viable product, and then they work with uh, gamma version, beta version, and all that before they come actually uh, to, to the fruition, to the full fullest capability of the product. But it is available in the marketplace, already to be used. Already, it's not a trial. They are already launching products into, uh, and, and to go into the market. Whereas banks are actually very much hesitant to do that because of various regulations and, and being able to not to upset the customers and all of that. But however, the fintechs have a different view of that. Uh, also data, data is becoming more and more important a whole lot of, uh, um, uh, fintech companies are coming with a whole lot of solutions to actually use data to their advantage and being able to service uh, their clients uh, with knowing what data can be done or how, what can be, uh, how data can be used. And basically uh, targeting selling with existing customer base uh, is what the banks normally look at, uh, maybe look at to increase, but what is it that you are looking at from a traditional bank's uh, financial institution point of view? Uh, whereas the uh, fintechs, they are ready to uh, build products, like I said, and they are ready to do trial and uh, error type of uh, uh, iteration type of uh, uh, product development. Uh, digital payments for transformation in a traditional bank, there are some key differentiators where you will be, you'll be able to compete with the uh, fintechs or with your competitors. And the key part there, the differentiators are able to launch innovative products and services in uh, less time or faster time to market and 
at a, at a lower cost, incurring cost as well. Then you need to have a success enabler. And this is what we call uh, the modern payments platform, Smart Vista. Uh, we have a number of uh, test cases, use cases, uh, customers who have come up and have actually launched this uh, success enabler type of uh, transformation. Uh, and using uh, your uh, DNA for innovations, uh, your brand reputation in the market, and the trust of your customers, uh, we'll together uh, work with our clients as partners and, and bring this transformation into place. So banks are banks can be a disruptive uh, digital player in the market, provided they're ready to do similar things what a fintech actually comes out and does. But banks has got greater capability because they have the resourcefulness of doing it. Fintech needs to continuously seek funding, and that is the uh, the, the primary game. Uh, when you look at how they actually work. So let's talk about uh, embracing the digital transformation using Smart Vista. Uh, one of our key customers uh, that we have, which is the Common Bank of Australia, uh, they have a full 100% digital bank in South Africa called Time Digital. Uh, where Smart Vista has been used for total digital acquiring, as well as uh, digital onboarding, uh, and uh, EKYC with one-time uh, enrollment and biometric authentication. Uh, basically, this is, there is no, uh, they don't have any branches, it's just a headquarters, but what they've done is they've built their own POS uh, application capability and basically use uh, the MPOS and our digital acquiring capability to come up with the, uh, the uh, digital acquiring and, uh, and onboarding. And as well as digital issuing and acceptance as well. So virtual card issuance, instant card issuance, there is no plastic actually. All of the scheme cards like MasterCard and all that are all virtual. And their customers, the cardholders, are able to come um, and, and, and actually uh, apply online by using their uh, government IDs like driver's license and passports as well as their own photos and other uh, EKYC type of parameters to uh, actually go and uh, issue, uh, uh, have the digital issuance capability. As well as digital acceptance, as I discussed about their uh, devices, which is purpose built using their own uh, uh, application uh, for QR code based payment, uh, MPOS payment gateway, NFC based payments, as well as supporting Samsung Pay, Apple Pay, and Android Pay. So, Smart Vista is fully uh, enabled and capable to go and deliver this. We have done in a number of uh, markets to do that. Now, I'm not saying that. And this is the difference here. I'm not saying you're going to get this within a few days or a few months of do, doing it. But it's a process. It's a partnership process where we work with a client to do it. And as I said earlier on, what is the difference of FinTech? That they are ready to work with, this, uh, with developing the products. And it goes, not for, for a few months, one year, two years, three years. But that's how they keep getting the injection of funding. They're developing the products. With, 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 with other themselves or with a vendor like us, but they are putting things in the marketplace. We have worked with, uh, with similar organizations in Indonesia and in Europe, but the point here is that they understand that in order to be have digital transformation, it is a very much trend, uh, partnership approach, working together and coming up with a solution that you are continuously improving and innovating uh, for your clients and to be a, a lead player in the market. So promoting cashless society, making it mutual, beneficial, uh, and sustainable. Uh, if I give, uh, if I may use a QR code example of uh, where Smart Vista has been used in uh, Cambodia, uh, where uh, customer, uh, the, the beauty about QR code payment is that when a merchant and a customer engages uh, in uh, card, uh, card acceptance uh, for payment of goods uh, or payment uh, token acceptance, is that the merchant is paid immediately. And uh, today, if you look in a pause environment, it takes two days, three days, or T plus one, T plus two, whatever it takes for the merchant to get the, uh, to get the funds. But in an environment where the merchant really embraces uh, uh, digital payment, is that when they get paid immediately, instantly. So this is the, 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 one of the key and the most uh, uh, the key advantage of having a setup like this, and China is the number one market leader, world leader in this. Uh, even a person selling uh, uh, vegetables, fish, and things uh, on a market or roadside, 
they don't accept cash. They use their uh, QR, uh, QR payment capability to, to, uh, to exchange payments for services that forget a good soul. Uh, same thing, uh, if you look at, uh, you can transfer funds, it doesn't have to be a uh, bank account, but it can be account li uh, linked, uh, linked to your mobile number, uh, to mobile numbers, and they can use mobile numbers to transfer funds. But this mobile number, of course, uh, is part of your, uh, 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 it is well authenticated with KYC and all that, uh, and, then you, and then your cardholders are able to transfer funds just by using mobile phones numbers as well. Uh, uh, debit accounts and send funds, but it is linked uh, by the banks uh, from an account number point of view. Uh, enabling mobile wallets uh, as well. The, one of the things that I have seen over the years in my, life, uh, in my 20 plus years of experience in, in payments and having seen this uh, in Australia and New Zealand as well as in uh, Asia uh, and a little bit of understanding about Europe is that everybody talks about mobile wallet. It is there, but the key point is that what is the take-up rate? How is it operating in terms of uh, moving forward? Uh, what is the constraints? What are the constraints that you're currently facing? Is it to, uh, related with integration, interfacing? Or uh, you, uh, or you have your card delivery system on different platform, mobile wallet is on different platform. How you are able to handle uh, various ways of making sure that they are both connected with each other and, and being able to use uh, efficiently? rather than just as a mobile payment uh, or wallet itself. So one of the things with Smart Vista is that when our customers use mobile wallet and mobile payment, it is an industrial strength solution. It provides volume capability, it provides performance as Smart Vista does, as well as you're able to integrate this to any of the other platforms that requires to be integrated. So uh, some of the key features is that if your cardholders, say for example, credit card, uh, if your cardholder is traveling overseas, they are able to say they want, where they want to use the credit card for. And if they can have multi-currency and things like that, all those can be uh, easily configured and available uh, for the uh, cardholder as well as for the, uh, the, the wallet uh, in mobile payments and for wallet solutions. Uh, my colleagues later on, they'll speak more in detail how all of this is possible. Again, uh, one of the... Uh, uh, one of the things that I have seen that I used to know uh, in the 80s uh, was API, Application Programming Interface. We used to do all this. I was a developer a long time ago. But the point is now API is the buzzword. It's the same thing. What is happening is that you are allowing uh, other, other, other service providers, utility providers, or whoever it is, Netflix and whatever, they're all using uh, APIs to go and provide uh, uh, goods, uh, goods and services, or services in, in particular. Uh, so here, we are providing, Smart Vista is already API ready. So uh, we have the solution uh, in terms of, again, these are all, uh, all capability to be deployed as part of the uh, solutioning. Uh, it depends on the modules. And um, we are able to provide all of these integration with these on APIs. So it's all published APIs, and by the way, uh, Again, uh, Suman and Shalas will have detailed discussions and will, uh, will, will provide some demonstration as well. Uh, one of our customers in New Zealand, uh, Warehouse Financials, uh, they're using uh, loyalty as a digital currency. So, and again, this is done all through Smart Vista. So, when a credit card user, uh, when a credit card uh, holder goes and purchases for say 30 New Zealand dollars, they get one purple dollar, which is equivalent to one New Zealand dozen dollar itself, and then as they accumulate and when they want to use it and they're doing some other purchases, they can actually use the purple dollar to pay for goods and services in real time mode. Agent making solution, which I think could, could be uh, of a great use here in uh, Nepal because I've seen this in uh, Cambodia where their microfinance uh, uh, credit services are being available, uh, installment payments, uh, buy now, pay later. Uh, and person-to-person -person transfer, biometric authentication, so agency banking, so a whole lot of uh, what we call it, uh, reaching out to rural and semi-urban segments uh, in the marketplace for this. And we also have our smart city initiatives. Uh, here we actually, this is where banks like yourselves are able to uh, tap onto smart city initiatives uh, within Nepal if there is anything, anything happening I heard there is something happening in Pokhara, but uh, 
in India, if you look at it, banks are actively involved uh, in taking part, and they don't want to be missed out. So Smart Vista is fully capable to support uh, driving of the validators out in the transportation or any other ticketing. But not only that, we are providing uh, account-based ticketing. Account-based ticketing means that, and this is the best way. So you have a, uh, you have a wallet or an NFC, uh, NFC capable card or any other form of uh, 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 virtual card. Basically, you are able to link the bank accounts to this wallet and being able to go and uh, do automatic fare collections and things like that. So all of those capabilities we, can, we provide within Smart Vista. So if you are contemplating of uh, having this, this sort of services available, uh, not only for transportation, but as well as for uh, some other like uh, agriculture, marketplace and all of that, uh, this is something that uh, we are actively involved in with some of our partner banks uh, and customers in the world. So if you look at it, uh, Smart Vista is a digital transformation enabler. Uh, our current needs uh, in the blue are, uh, if you look at it, so debit, credit, these are what I call traditional banking capabilities. It's all there, everybody does it. If it works, don't break, let it go. It's, it's there, it's good. Now, future needs, if you're looking at biometrics, uh, national ID payments, instant payments, tokenization, um, uh, the WhatsApp, uh, uh, sorry, the QR payments and all of that. If that's the case, then here, what we are saying is that Smart Vista is able to play a role uh, uh, in, uh, in a way. If, if your service provider is providing something on a traditional site, we'll be able to actually leverage that and enhance your capability to provide digital payments uh, capability, like mobile payments, digital wallets, APIs, interfaces, uh, and, and having various types of capability and even fraud for that matter. So as you can see here, we talk about a single platform for current and future needs is Smart Vista. So we have over uh, about 20 plus something uh, offices globally. We have global present and BPC is the fastest growing enterprise uh, company in the world. And uh, we, we do deliver full uh, payments uh, cycle. In other words, a single application to issue all types of cards. So you don't have to have multiple types of applications. Over the years, we have grown quite rapidly, exponentially as well. And uh, we do provide uh, a full roadmap for three year roll rollover roadmap onto what we're going to do in the next three years. So we have all of these things in place and it is proven. Uh, we have been continuously upgrading and, and following our roadmaps on, for that matter. And some of this will be discussed by our, my colleagues and some of our key customers where we have transformed them. Uh, I really mean transform because if you look at HSBC, it's a worldwide uh, global leader market bank. They uh, contracted Smart Vista, BBC, last year to transform their uh, payment switch capability. They had about like seven or 11 uh, other applications, switch and cards applications. They are now rolling out Smart Vista in 35 countries worldwide. So, uh, and that show, shows that uh, their belief in what we are able to do. And uh, so, um, and we'll continue to do that. Uh, uh, analysts, industry analysts like Ovum, uh, IDC and Cellnet, uh, PayX and Gartner, they all have uh, given uh, a high ratings for BPC. And that completes my presentation. Uh, it is a introductory presentation. Uh, I will have my colleagues coming over and they will do their uh, detailed uh, showcases of uh, demos and, and, and into details. But before that, uh, sorry, I'm going to ask uh, Praveen, the CEO of NEPS, to say a few words, uh, being our, uh, our primary, primary customer here. And uh, I'll be very, very much uh, delighted to have him on stage to say a few, few words. Privileged and honored to. Yeah, for the last uh, approximately four years now has been partnered with uh, VPC and uh, we have found uh, this product is very robust as well as you know um, scalable and uh, stable so that uh, we started with uh, five banks initially but now we have uh, 15 banks uh, without any hassle or without any problem. So it's a really, really uh, good product that we have uh, found. And 
the support side is also quite uh, interesting, and uh, we all feel very, uh, uh, very good, uh, you know, partnership. Uh, and we are doing um, uh, win -win, I mean, business in win-win uh, situations. That's why um, we, we are able to uh, bring more banks into the same platform. Having uh, said that, I wish uh, all the success for this uh, program. Uh, and all the best to BPC and uh, its entire team, including the local partner, Imar. Thank you. Thank you very much. The biggest question is what is needed to be the equal member of the global market and this will be used as a one-stop platform for your payments and the key business benefits delivered. business, enabling payments business of banks. So it initially starts with probably starting to issue, uh, let's take uh, examples like starting to issue debit cards and they kind of look out for a quick fix solution, go out and issue debit cards. Once that stabilizes, then probably they want to expand on the credit issuance and then on the prepaid. So then uh, probably the current platform supports it or probably they go and look out for some external solution for that. And then uh, as things go forward, then probably expand into the acquiring side. More transactions coming in, that's when the fraud starts hitting in. So look out for some fraud solutions, which is robust, which is uh, real-time, responsive, uh, providing solutions. And then, uh, then comes some technological revolutions in terms of going for EMV compliance. There is EMV mandates coming in, then contactless NFC coming in, then QR code-based payments. Then again, we look out for some quick fix solutions in terms of that's where the customization box comes into place, wherein some hard-coded solutions come into place and then it, it kind of fixes the problem at that moment. Then comes in the regulatory changes, new new regulatory changes, for example, Visa now coming up with 19-digit, uh, I mean, card number. So uh, that's coming in and very soon MasterCard would follow that as well. Uh, from a 3D secure perspective, which is the e-commerce acquiring perspective, that is uh, 3D Secure 2.0 uh, standards coming in. So again, uh, this customization box becomes bigger over a period of time. And then additional business needs from senior management definitely comes in, in terms of targeting new segments, the agency banking solutions, the internet banking, mobile banking, digital wallets, all those expansions coming in. So uh, when we look at it, right, over a period of time, uh, from especially from an IT standpoint, uh, this box, the e-payment system box particularly becomes bigger and bigger over a period of time. Uh, quick fix thing, is this the right approach? Uh, definitely yes and definitely no. Uh, it depends upon which period or which context we're looking at. Uh, we'll, we'll, uh, I'll come about it again uh, towards the end of my solution. Uh, and does this provide investment protection, uh, especially towards your uh, the application, the hardware that you provide or that you purchased over a period of time? And can this kind of maximize your product revenues, um, really serve your customer needs? We look at it. So the real challenge with a complex uh, payment uh, solution, right, uh, the payment system which is present, right, it looks like there are so many customers for you, a credit card, debit card, prepaid card customer, they might use different channels. Uh, it can be ATM, it can be e-commerce channels, it can be traditional digital, any of these channels to perform various types of transactions. It can be purchases, just balance inquiry, they want to stop their card, uh, all these kind of various channels. And that's where the e-payment system interface comes in, which is the extremely complicated part. Different customers, the transaction flow, if you could see, it will be extremely complicated in terms of multiple uh, systems being around. And then we have the external interfaces like Visa, MasterCard, SCP Network, NEPS, enabling those connectivities. Uh, and then we will have some external systems, fraud, credit scoring systems, all those things coming up. And of course, the core banking systems. Now, the real challenge here is like over a period of time, right, the maintenance of this system per se itself becomes extremely complicated, especially uh, with a limited IT budget for a bank. This becomes extremely complicated. And uh, 
more importantly, let's take some uh, typical examples like a senior management just wanting to understand what is the net relationship value for a customer from a customer's perspective. So I as a customer with any of your bank could have a credit portfolio, uh, can, be a, uh, can have my prepaid accounts, can have my savings banks account, all those things. And just to extract the report, which is uh, approval at a customer level, there might have to be different systems. You will have to extract different data from different systems, find some unique identifiers, how to kind of collate it, and then provide a report. Now, any small changes, minor changes to this report, I get it becomes an extreme challenge again uh, to go through the customization. Similarly, uh, Visa, MasterCard, UPI coming up with mandates. Now, the challenge is like different systems present. Now, there has to be separate projects teams with operating and uh, providing these patches to you. Uh, that itself becomes a project in itself, the mandates from provision. And that's where Smart Vista comes into picture. Uh, uh, becomes a single stop platform for your uh, all your issuance and acquiring needs, end-to-end -end digital payments. Uh, the key part is that uh, here, uh, any of your existing businesses, any of your existing platforms can remain assets. Uh, no need to kind of change that per se to Smart Pista, but Smart Pista can kind of coexist. So in case, uh, let's take an example. For instance, currently you are well set with your traditional channels. So let the traditional channels remain in the current systems, current platforms as is. In the digital front, probably you could target Smart Pista per se. Uh, because uh, Smart Pista is a future-proof platform, it was backward compatible with all the traditional channels and the, uh, and the kind of future-proof as well. When I say future-proof, uh, there are many indicators for a future-proof platform, like for example, a couple of things to quote, non-card based routing, uh, non-card number based routing, uh, that's a future-proof uh, based solution. These are key traits, uh, similarly real-time loyalty being present in a system, uh, a system which is completely modular, wherein the turn features can be turned off, turn, uh, turned on. Product configurations are highly configurable. Uh, which enables you the capability to turn on, turn off uh, features. That's a key trait. So let's look at a few features. So uh, primarily, I'll be covering all the traditional part channels, and then uh, the subsequent fleet signage will be covering all the digital pieces. Uh, so Smart Vista, one-stop solution for your issuing and acquiring needs, uh, right from the issuance side, which is credit, debit, prepaid, virtual cards, QR code-based transactions, and the loyalty and reward management, both on the issuance side and the acquiring side, so the merchant loyalty, card based loyalty, both real time, patch based, it's all available. Then on the digital wallets, yes, uh, internet banking, mobile banking, agency banking, uh, fraud management, comprehensive fraud uh, prevention and management systems. Then on the acquiring side, you've got the merchant POS, NPOS capabilities, I mean NPOS interfacing, and then uh, high performance transaction switching, and of course, uh, payment, gateway, merchant plugin, and the uh, ACS speech. Now, the best part is, uh, from a smart vista perspective, these are all highly modular in nature. So, for example, if your current needs is only ACS or payment gateway, or uh, probably you want to look at the credit card piece alone. So, these are all turn on, turn off features for us. That's the uh, best part of smart vista. So, that's where we really bring in the coexistence part with your current platforms. And uh, going on to the issuance side, a uh, double click on it. Uh, uh, it's, an, uh, it's a single stop platform for all your uh, card issuance, credit, debit, prepaid, loyalty, uh, cards. Uh, whether you want to target the retail segment or the corporate segment, uh, it's all available. And uh, uh, in terms of magnetic stripe, EMV, contactless, uh, paid for the uh, Visa, MasterCard, UPI schemes. And in case you want to enable the connectivity with your uh, networks, uh, SEP, NPN, uh, it's all uh, highly configurable, Smart Vista is from an interface perspective. And Smart Vista also has got all the digital delivery methods, digital uh, methods, for example, you want the card number to be delivered to a wallet, yes, that's where the Smart Vista API services come into play. You want the card to be authenticated by biometrics, yes, you've got that capability to store biometrics in Smart Vista database. And uh, deliver pins via uh, um, I mean, uh, not through the paper-based pins, but through e-channel, e e uh, e-delivery of pins. That's again, uh, it's all implemented, tested. And uh, also we've got multi-card, multi-account linkage. So a single uh, family uh, having a single account, having multiple cards, supplementary cards being issued. 
Alternatively, I can have a single card which acts as both prepaid card and credit card, uh, uh, with credit account and uh, prepaid account linked to the same card. So these are available. Uh, for example, recently a bank in India, uh, Indusin Bank, they launched a, a dual chip card, meaning a single plastic with dual chip. Uh, and it was a big hype in the market, first in the market to come. And um, uh, just to let you know from a smart desktop perspective, it's a very standard feature available. It's a configuration uh, in terms of launching such kind of cards. Uh, so uh, that's the key part of smart Vista. Then uh, from a multi-currency support, a multilingual support, we have it. And uh, the two key features from a revenue perspective, from an issuance business, which is the flexible fees and transaction restrictions, uh, uh, which is the flexible limits fees. So uh, any type of fees can be configured, fixed, tiered percentage. For example, if a cardholder uh, performs more transactions, more than 50,000 NPR in a year, wave off his AMC, uh, annual card uh, membership fees. Just a configuration with smart right? So, And you want to run campaigns during Navratri, any transactions being made, additional loyalty points will have to be accrued. Or you wave off any of the fees, onboarding fees or something. These are configurations in smart Vista. Automatically, at the end of Navratri, the default fees, everything gets applied. So you do not track it per se in terms of how you want to change it. Limits, uh, especially with frauds going in, um, uh, going up, uh, in terms of enabling the customer themselves to maintain those limits, whether ATM limits uh, or uh, e I mean e-commerce channel limits. So by channel, you can maintain different limits. Smart Vista is completely flexible and configurable for that. And uh, we've got very powerful restriction schemes uh, so, for example, like Visa calling up and saying, seems like your card, uh, there is a bin attack on your card. That implies like all the cards are being just experimented with that particular bin number and then they're trying to penetrate your entire uh, card database. In Smart Vista, just click of a button, you can stop an entire bin or a particular card uh, from further transactions to go through. And this does not require end of day, restart, scripting, configuration, I mean, uh, scripting or any of the things to be run. It's just click of a button and these features get enabled. The, the next, uh, from the next second, the further transactions are stopped. Uh, similarly, for example, you want to launch prepaid cards and high-risk countries will have to be stopped. Uh, transactions from high-risk countries like Nigeria or something will have to be stopped. Very simple, you can define your list and say stop, from, stop any transactions coming in from here. Similarly, you want to just allow only e-commerce transactions to be allowed through a particular card. These are configurations in Smart Vista. Alerts and notifications engine in terms of sending real-time and batch-based alerts to your cardholders, that's available. And more importantly, the deferred payment plans, which is uh, installments features for credit cards. This is highly uh, flexible and configurable. For example, I, I purchase something and then I, I convert it into installments. And after three months of repayment, I would like to have this converted. For example, I don't want to pay for the next seven months, I want to have this uh, paid out in the next three months probably. So the entire recalculation per se, it's so highly flexible in Smart Vista. It's called the acceleration of deferred payment plans. It's, it's highly configurable in Smart Vista. And also you can have insurance uh, premiums, all those things automatically charged to the cardholder. And most importantly, these are configurations at individual card level or at a product level, you can have it. Uh, you, these are all applied in real time. Any, most of the things that you see here, or any changes made is applied in real time. And these are web-based access. You can change on your own. And going on to the virtual card side, uh, yes, uh, the existing plastic cards can be converted to virtual cards. It can be delivered to internet banking, mobile banking channels, or any of the wallets. Uh, QR code based sub, uh, channels are supported. Uh, and uh, host card emulation, so in case on the mobile, in case of NFC based payments, token based payments, uh, it's fully supported. In terms of transaction switching, uh, we have a high performance transaction switching engine. Uh, uh, the standard mode is supported, for example, when your core banking system is down, Smart Vista fully takes over in terms of providing availability for your debit card customers. Uh, and uh, there will be a seamless uh, transfer back to the uh, accounts in terms of store and forward. That is implemented in multiple places. And in terms of enabling international and uh, uh, local payment schemes connectivity, Smart Vista is well certified for all those things. And uh, in terms of comprehensive ATM uh, management, uh, of course, the 
standards of ATM onboarding management, uh, any kind of uh, ATMs, NDC, PDC protocols are supported. And more importantly, let's look at key features, for example, in terms of building scenarios and then sending them remotely to a particular ATM or to a group of ATMs. That is, uh, that the smart investor seamlessly supports it. For example, during uh, Dashara, uh, a particular campaign has to be built, uh, a marketing campaign has to be built and then put across to, uh, loaded across to different uh, ATMs. You can set up your office, design various scenarios, different screens, and then remotely load onto the ATMs. Uh, and uh, more importantly, the monitoring of the ATMs, in case an ATM goes down, automatic alerts being sent to you, sent to us, or sent to any of the vendors who are managing it, those are all configurable in Smart Vista. And also cash management, uh, ATM, I mean the cash in an ATM generally is considered as debt. Uh, uh, so overloading or, I mean, optimizing the cash loading in an ATM. Smart Vista also provides reports for that in terms of how to pro optimize, optimally load cash. And uh, in terms of the uh, merchant management and boss acquiring side, uh, one of the key features is that, uh, I mean, the real challenge from a merchant side is that uh, different merchants can have different uh, structures. Uh, it can be a single store merchant, it can be a big merchant with multiple supermarkets having, I mean, so many terminals, different locations, and he might want a different kind of settlement scheme with you per se. So uh, it can be a franchisee owner, it can be so. From a smart investor perspective, it's highly configurable in terms of how these merchants need to be onboarded, how you want to have that contract with those particular merchants. Those are highly configurable in smart investor. And also from a terminal perspective, all the standard terminals are supported. Uh, also MPOS interfacing, uh, so the uh, mobile POS interface is also fully supported in smart investor. From a loyalty perspective, both on the issuer and the acquirer side, uh, uh, we have the standard loyalty. So we can have separate rules for the issuer side, I mean, the approval side and the uh, redemption side. Uh, uh, transaction based loyalty, event based loyalty. Uh, so, for example, for uh, the Diwali, we have to give a special promotion or uh, 10 times the loyalty point should be approved. Or loyalty at a particular <coughs> merchant store alone should be provided. So these are configurations in Smart Vista. So you can target different segments of your customers with various loyalty programs that you think is best or is going to really attract them. Similarly, from a retention perspective, catalog retention, tie up with the Nepal um, International Airlines, all those airlines, all those things is supported. Uh, Okay. Two key concepts here. So, in terms of uh, enterprise-wide real-time loyalty, so these are certain implementations which we have. So, for example, I as a customer, I can uh, so uh, I can have my preferred uh, payments. So, uh, as a bank, you can have tie up with various uh, utility service providers, uh, different uh, 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 pillars, all those things, and then uh, a special tie-up program in terms of. If your card is being used for these kind of specific payments across these merchants, uh, you have a special loyalty uh, program rewarded. The real challenge today is like everyone in our wallet has got three or four cards at the minimum. So the, the key thing is that your card should be picked up for payment. And that is where the loyalty comes as a boost. Uh, and Smart Vista provides a key feature there. And similarly, uh, for example, a family having multiple cards, uh, different cards being used by different people, but at an account level, we can have the loyalty accrue. And then uh, it can be a family level loyalty that can be uh, uh, used per se. And uh, some of the additional features, reports in Smart Vista is highly configurable. You can generate your own reports. It can be senior level reports or reports with dashboards that needs to be displayed that is also available. And this can be delivered in the channel that you want. And uh, in terms of access management, audit logs, these are standard features what we have. Uh, in terms of the non-functional features, the security aspects going in, uh, so Smart Vista is platform agnostic. Uh, so uh, in terms of investment protection, so it works on uh, x86 uh, or any Unix based uh, machines. So any of your existing uh, machines or something, uh, we can reutilize if, if you are considering something. So that is an investment protection. You can decide uh, the platform of your choice. At the same time, we also have our hosting services. We have our uh, hosting servers in, uh, in uh, UK, uh, in Hungary. We have also in uh, uh, Pax Mauritius, one of our customers has said, and we also have it in uh, Russia. So we can also provide you hosting services in such a case required. 
And uh, Smart Vista is a highly scalable solution. We support horizontal and uh, vertical scalability. Um, uh, so uh, that that is, I mean, in terms of the performance, you can be rest assured. And uh, uh, in terms of downtime, uh, any of the uh, uh, during end of day batches or any of the uh, business logic configurations, there is no restart required. Uh, only during probably the core module updates or the mandate updates, probably there is a 30 seconds to 3 minute restart that was planned. So, uh, just to let you know in terms of the approach, uh, we generally, uh, uh, from a Nepal perspective, we, can, we definitely recommend the orchestration approach. That is, if you have any of the existing uh, systems, any of your existing uh, systems, we would uh, probably uh, request you to kind of keep it, no problem. And Smart Vista can provide you an enabler capability in terms of either linking those systems or providing you an additional capability whichever you're looking at. So for example, you currently have all your traditional channels covered, you would like to go only on the digital piece, then we can work together just focusing on the digital piece with Smart Vista. Uh, alternatively, uh, also, uh, Smart Vista can also provide a, a kind of complete end-to-end uh, -end solution for all your end-to-end -end, uh, focus as well, I mean, uh, needs from a, a payments perspective. So, uh, from uh, benefits, key benefits, uh, 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 business benefits which our customers have realized, first thing, uh, since the, uh, the products and services are highly configurable in Smart Vista through web GUI, they are able to uh, reach out to the market, roll out the products to the market at a very faster pace. Uh, so the product revenues are much faster, you can be ahead of your competitors. And in terms of single platform approach for all systems, uh, basically uh, in terms of uh, the hardware cost, all those, the license, all those things. So it's, it becomes a single platform for uh, uh, delivery. So the technology cost really comes down. And you have a single view of all your customers, prepaid, debit card, credit card, using different channels. You have a single view of your customer. And the best part is like, you can really go in for uh, uh, cross-selling, upselling. all those strategies can be defined and you can use it. And then omni-channel uh, access experience, again as indicated, uh, a customer might use different channels. Smart Vista provides the same consistent information across all channels, traditional channels and digital channels for the customer for the cardholder or for any customer. So that's that's the key part. And again, the operation cost. The real challenge is in case there is a mismatch between a balance inquiry from two different channels. The first thing customer will do is call the customer care. So the operation cost really comes down if the uh, omni-channel experience is provided. Again, as indicated, platform agnostic, uh, uh, 224 bar 7 architecture is available. And uh, uh, it's a seamless integration with your existing systems and existing apps. That implies a uh, very low technology cost, no big replacements, no big bank uh, replacements required. And that's where Smart Vista, first thing from a functional capability perspective, is highly flexible and uh, is future proof. And second thing from, uh, uh, from the cost perspective as well, from a technology or something, we are highly agnostic and we are highly flexible. So uh, as we go along, uh, my colleague Silesh will uh, detail you on the digital capabilities of Smart Vista as well. Uh, any other questions? For the banks to enable the payment needs of your customers and the business needs so far in your career at the same time. Now, as part of your push to migration, Mrs. Ayesh. After that, I'm Uh, so here we are going to talk about how we can do the quick deployment of Smart Vista. Modular in nature, there are various modules, but may not be all modules are uh, uh, required by your system. So you can pick and choose and take the advantage of service oriented architecture. What is the module you need at the moment? What is the strategy as of now, right now in your bank? Okay. So you can have digital banking, you can have switching system, you can have CMS, uh, fraud system, whatever module is making your existing platform uh, more complementary, we will only uh, go for that one. So how do you choose that? Because there is a lot of products from Smart Vista, some functionalities overlap here and there. Right now you have some kind of a strategy in your bank, some kind of a direction from your senior management. How do you choose it? So we also provide you some kind of a consultative approach. 
uh, we see since one size doesn't fit all, so every bank has its own requirement. They have their own uh, strategy. They have their own future needs. So we go for consultation. We help you to uh, identify or uh, fine tune the strategy. We help you to uh, make sure how you can maximize your revenues. What is the alternative options available? Uh, what is in the short term you can do? What is in the long term you can do? Uh, right now, what is your IT capability? Uh, depending on uh, how, what is your competitive edge in the market? How you can def uh, design your uh, 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 platform? We'll help you with that. Uh, we have uh, iMark as already mentioned by uh, Rajan. So you, we can provide you local support as well. Uh, any kind of uh, operational needs, any kind of uh, uh, support uh, pro to be provided from BBC. And we try to develop the capabilities you already have and leverage it. So how we can do it quickly? That is what I am trying to talk about here. First you package your own uh, 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 platform. Like you only want, suppose switching system, you go for only switch. You want more. Uh, you add e-commerce, you want to add a mobile internet banking, you want to add e-wallets, payroll portal, merchant portal, universal hub. It's, it's a, uh, a big platform actually. So you can package your own and depending on that we can define the deployment strategy. But how we do it, like the tools at your disposal, how we help to do it very quickly. So from migration perspective we have uh, many standard scripts from multiple source systems. Uh, there are ETL tools, reconciliation reports, everything is ready in Smart Vista as we have around 200 customers. Most of them we have migrated and uh, these things have been developed over the years. Uh, from the certification perspective, it is already certified with uh, most of the payment systems. Visa, MasterCard, UPI, Discover, Diners, JCB. Uh, <laughs> Even in the, uh, now in Asia, what we are seeing is even the domestic uh, uh, switches are being integrated uh, some way, somehow. Like rupee in India is being integrated to uh, nets in Singapore. So in Asia Pacific, this is going to happen in future. We already know. So uh, Smart Vista is also certified with domestic payment systems in uh, Asia. It's rupee, uh, NBC in Cambodia, Napas in Vietnam, MPU in Myanmar. All actually integrated. We provide you tools for simulation, ATM simulation, uh, POS simulation, and there is an, uh, another tool for interface simulation, ARIS. It is uh, own BPC developed. Any kind of interfaces can be simulated. So it helps you to test it out faster. Product management. So we have standard templates which can be loaded into uh, Smart Vista for product management perspective uh, from the local market as well as. Uh, we have NIPS uh, here. So how you do it? It's uh, uh, very common for migration. From the existing legacy system, you extract the data, you transform it based on the requirement from Smart Vista. You generate the reports, do the reconciliation, and load it with Smart Vista. Okay. But uh, we are here uh, mentioning that we can do it very quickly, but that doesn't mean that uh, we are not doing uh, at a fine detail level. We do a step-by-step -step strategy. Uh, we uh, uh, study the product structure in your existing system and map it with Smart Vista. What is the entity structure? How the customer, how the accounts, how the relationships are in your existing system? How we can map it to Smart Vista? What are the essential agreements during the migration? Are we having any kind of a data loss, any interest loss, any financial loss, how we can configure it or how we can uh, minimize it? Do we need to build any statement history? Do we need to, how we handle the uh, uh, rejected transactions? So many things. So we make sure that all essential agreements are in place before we proceed. All the parameters from your uh, legacy system to Smart Vista are being mapped. Uh, do we need to build the delinquency for credit card migration, which is the most complex one? Uh, do you have a, uh, something like oldest due date or do I need to calculate during the migration and load it in Smart Vista? What are the milestones during the uh, migration stage? What are the checkpoints? Where do we define go or no go decisions? Who are the, uh, uh, how we do it actually? 
how we generate the reports, what we reconcile, what we don't, if it doesn't reconcile, how we take it further, do we need any manual actions? So as I mentioned, like from issuing perspective, what is your portfolio size, what is the schemes you are following, acquiring, digital, we study your existing system and what is the approach? It's a risk-based approach to minimize the impact during the migration. What is the cost-based? Uh, we don't want any throwaway developments from our system. 